Hey there everyone, this is Jessica from DomesticatedMe.com. If you are new to my channel, welcome, bienvenidos, my name is Jessica Flores and I am a beauty obsessed, fashion loving, DIY project making Latina mom from New York City and I blog and vlog at Domesticated Me. Today we are in my kitchen because we have a very special DIY project in this video. I'm so excited for this. This is my biggest DIY project yet, I think. I've done a few DIY home uh, blog posts and I'll link to some of my favorites below, but this is my first big DIY project that I'm filming. I hope to do a lot more. But today, I am again in my kitchen. I rent here in New York City, and because of that, there are not a lot of big changes that I can do because I don't own my apartment, I rent. And there are certain things that landlords, well, let's just say you're not, you don't really usually get top of the line appliances and fixtures when you live in a rental because landlords try to keep their costs slow and we tend to have leases that are only about a year or two years long so they're they they use good products good um, features but not the top of the line because people are in and out and so they try to just you know keep it simple in these kitchens while I do love my kitchen and it's a good size for New York City <laughs> But there are some things that I want to change, and one thing specific, and it's these countertops. These are not the best quality. These, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to request for white cabinets, and I got the white cabinets with the silver finishes, with the chrome finishes, so I like those. But these countertops, not my favorite. So today, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do something that is simple, super affordable to do, and easy to get off when you are finished with it, when you want to change it, or when I leave the apartment. Here's what you'll need contact paper of your choice, make sure you have enough to cover all of your surfaces, scissors, measuring tape, something to help you push out air bubbles, cleaning supplies for your counters, and here are a few optional materials you might need. An X-Acto knife or box cutter to help you cut around the edges more precisely, caulk to seal around the kitchen sink. Everything I'm specifically using will be listed in the description box below. You're going to start by removing everything off your countertops. Then you'll need to thoroughly clean your counter surface. You'll also want to make sure that the counter is dry before you start attaching the contact paper. Now you can measure your counters and see how much contact paper you'll need to cover your first surface. Give yourself an extra inch or two on each side. I like this particular brand of contact paper because it's lined underneath to help you measure and cut in straight lines. It's also important to figure out which direction you want to apply the contact paper. Because I use this counter to chop and plate my dishes and usually have a few kitchen gadgets and storage containers along the back, I'm going to apply the contact paper horizontally. You're going to start by draping the contact paper over one end and slowly pulling back the graph paper and adhering the contact paper to the counter. Use your hand, a plastic card, or a smoothing tool to help push out air bubbles as you go along. Cut the excess material from the edges. I'm using an X-Acto knife because I want clean cut lines. There are two ways you can finish the edges. You can cut or you can fold. Which way you'll want to finish the edges will depend on your taste and the kind of counter edges you have. My counter edges are rounded. Here I try cutting the excess material off with my X-Acto blade, but I prefer folding. Depending on the kind of contact paper design you use, it won't be noticeable. Now measure how much material you'll need to finish covering the last part of the counters and cut the contact paper accordingly. Then repeat the steps to apply. With this pattern, the seam will not be very noticeable. While you can try to line up the edges perfectly, I recommend overlapping. That way you don't have to worry too much about getting residue buildup in the crease and between the contact paper and counter surface. But you can do whatever way you prefer. I recommend cutting off the graph paper as you go along to help you maintain better control of the contact paper.
cut the excess material from the edges. I'm using this opportunity to declutter my counter, so I'm storing some of what I had out and I'm leaving just a few necessities on the counter. Now to tackle the sink counter. Once again, I clean out everything on the counter and sink area. Because we're always going to have a dish rack right next to the sink, I decided to adhere the contact paper vertically this time. The drying rack will cover the seam. Now you'll just repeat the same steps to attach the contact paper to this counter. To adhere the contact paper around the sink, I'll repeat the previous steps, except this time I'll use the X-Acto knife to cut around the sink's edges. Cut smaller pieces to add contact paper around the rest of the sink and countertop. An additional step you can add here is to use caulk to seal the edges of the sink. I didn't have any at the time, but I do recommend doing this step for a more clean, polished, professional finish. Here is the final look. I love the way this DIY project turned out. My kitchen is now brighter and looks more modern. Now that I have new, more beautiful countertops, I decided to declutter and upgrade some of my kitchen items. Thanks to my friends at Premium Racks, I was able to upgrade to this fully customizable stainless steel professional dish rack. I hope you enjoyed this DIY home video. Please like and share if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned.